Hi there. If you're new to the channel, let me introduce myself quickly. My name is Laszlo Marcel, and this channel deals with DIY home automation, home networking, and related stuff like DIY electronics and 3D printing. In today's short video, I will show you a nice little tool that I personally use for working with multiple PCs, laptops, and whatnot that are connected to the same network. It can be really, really useful when you are uh, trying to use a single keyboard and a mouse but you don't want to spend on a key VM switch or something like that. So if you're interested, stay with me. So this is a sign that greets me every morning when I come to my home office. And yeah, I'm not talking about the crappy cable management nor about that weird cableless Raspberry Pi, but I'm talking about having space for two computers, my company laptop and my PC, and with it for only one keyboard and one mouse. Now, of course, you can say I could use something like a KVM switch and get done with it. But then again, I would say, yeah, for a KVM switch, you need to spend money. And why do that when you have an elegant free solution? Also regarding KVM switches, I have some bad news. For those who are into gaming, because well, I know some of you are. So a KVM switch is basically a device that uh, watches out for specific key press on the input, which is your keyboard and your mouse. And uh, based on the key presses, it will just uh, decide which way to route the output. So either to your PC1 or laptop or whatever, or PC2 or laptop2 or whatever. But the point is it introduces input lag. And yeah, that can be bad. Also, not, let's not forget the extra cable management, because in the worst case, you are getting two extra USB cables or even a power supply. Before showing you the actual technical details of the solution, here's a quick uh, montage. This is a demo. One part is from my Linux desktop, one part is from my Windows desktop. And as you can see, the mouse and of course the keyboard I sim are seamlessly uh, changing between the two. I don't need to press a key combination or whatever. I don't have to push a switch or something like that. I can just literally move my mouse from my Windows desktop to my Linux desktop as they were a single desktop. And yeah, they are still running on two different computers. So what makes this possible for me? So here we go. The project is called Barrier. And as I've told you already, it's free software. So you can just have the source code look into it and make sure that it won't, let's say, forward your key presses to some shady cloud uh, host or something like that. So as you can see, it supports a lot of operating systems, especially a lot of flavors and distributions of Linux and of course Windows and Mac and whatnot. So yeah, this is truly a uh, cross-platform software and it's under active development. Interesting thing is that Barrier has been forked from another project called Synergy. And although Synergy used to be an open source software itself, um, nowadays it's a fully commercial solution. So you have to pay extra money for using it and uh, yeah, it has some nice features compared to Barrier, but still, I prefer the open source version for obvious reasons. Now, let's look into installation and whatnot and see how it works in the practice. As you can see, installing it is pretty simple. It's just a binary, you start, and then it greets you with the usual installation wizard. So you can just like click, click, next, next, finish, whatever. Also, they made this solution super convenient because you can just use the same binary for client installation, server installation, and even for upgrades. As you can see, it's just uh, installing over the old version. It will automatically shut it down, install the new version, and restart. And when you have the server up and running, you can start configuring it. Configuration is pretty simple for the average user. The application first will start in server mode and this is okay for the machine that will share its keyboard and mouse with the others. Now on to configuring the server. 
and we are talking about server configuration in case of barrier we are not dealing with uh, IP addresses or whatnot and, and firewall configuration and security and stuff like that so nothing uh, let's say sysadmin heavy or something like that but instead you are just uh, assigning other PCs running barrier to your server and in this case it means that uh, you have to add and uh, arrange other PCs so their desktops will align up nicely now you can see here I have my laptop called Stargazer and my main PC called Nexus and uh, they are aligned next to each other just like the physical devices on my desk so that's how their uh, desktops will add up of course nothing will prevent you from rearranging your desktops to your personal preferences it's just for me it's more natural to have them in the same way this is cool so far but how do we add another pc to our server so it can be used together with it well click uh, configure server then click on that uh, screen button on the top corner top right corner drag it and then double click it now you have some options here screen name is a name for your pc which with which uh, barrier will identify it now this must be the same that is uh, set up on your uh, client we will get back to that later also you can set up some additional options here like modifier key or whatnot um, you can just have everything as it is by default now on the client side um, you will need to obviously start uh, your barrier in a client mode so click that and your screen name will come from your host name basically this is the way to identify your PC on the um, server side so this is what you have to enter on the server when it asks for a screen name for a client in case of my laptop this is stargazer so that's what I have uh, there set up also you have to enter the server IP and pretty much that's it after that you can just click start you have to click start on both the server and on the client assuming you have everything set up it should be working now uh, and finally here are some extra infos so first of all you can close this client anytime barrier runs as a background service both on the on the client and on the server so you can just close it and it will be still running if you change the configuration in whatever way you will have to press reload ideally it only affects the side which on which you have changed the configuration but um, in case of a major change i just press reload on both sides no problem just a single click also troubleshooting barrier is easy because it produces logs which you can check here and finally of course you need to change um, you need to save your configuration so after adding a client and whatnot you have to press this either the hotkey or the menu item for saving configuration and with the default file location visible here you can just back up that configuration in case something happens with the, either with your server or with your client um, actually on the second thought ignore that this is just for servers also there are some settings which are generic and yeah you can override the screen name here in case you don't you're not satisfied with using your host name as a screen name you can change the log level and you can set up a log file logging info is uh, quite uh, verbose on the info level you will see all the connections and stuff like uh, uh, the event of moving your mouse from one desktop to another so if you're switching a lot uh, you might want to tune this down a bit to maybe warning or something like that and I guess it's pretty much that's it have fun using barrier so 
How do you like the idea of barrier so far? As I told you, I really like it. I mean, it's lightweight, it's free, it's easy to use, it's compatible with all the operating systems out there, or most of them. So yeah, why not use it when you need something like a KVM switch, which costs money, and this one doesn't. So yeah, time to close this video. Uh, one question though, if you're using such a solution, I mean sharing a single uh, mouse and the keyboard between multiple computers and uh, laptops and whatnot, please share it in the comments because I'm curious what other people are using for this purpose. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you next week with a new video with a new topic. And until then, yeah, stay safe out there. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.